Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about augers and drills. Uh, definitely not a pretty project, but it's how we get pretty things done around here. You've probably noticed that 99% of the time when I dig a hole, it's with an auger, not with a shovel. Uh, and we do see a lot of questions, especially like lately, we've seen a lot of questions come through about what kind of drill should I buy? What size of auger? This is the type of plants I'm putting in the ground. Um, so I thought it might be helpful just to run through all the sizes, the lengths, and just share our experience with you guys um, to hopefully save you some money. Uh, I'm hoping that by um, us kind of eliminating, like this one right here, we bought, we used once, we don't like it. It's way too long. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that by sharing that, it can kind of like hone your choice. So you're only buying one or two augers for what you need to do. Also, all of these augers are made by Power Planter, uh, but this video is not sponsored. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. They have sent us a couple of augers maybe a couple of years ago uh, and we liked them a lot and we've been buying them ever since and we've bought a whole bunch of different sizes to try the white ones here are made by power planter uh, but they are sold on proven winners website and that's why the color differentiation you know because proven winners says white cans white augers and these are actually um, built to be the proper size for proven winner size cans and we're going to actually head out after i'm kind of done going through all of these and we are going to dig some holes and i'm going to take some plants out there and i can show you how they fit in there i'm so visual that that's how I learn. So I'm hopeful that's helpful to those visual learners out there. Okay, so let's talk about auger size. In the home garden category, so the auger that you'll probably be using to dig the most amount of holes, you'll find the two inch and the three inch diameter size. So let me show you the difference. This is a two inch diameter. So diameter is the width of the auger. So the width that the auger will dig a hole. Um, the three inch size looks like this right here. So you can kind of see the difference. Now each one of these comes in several different lengths. So you can see like this is a seven inch long auger. We've used this one a lot. The finish has even rubbed off on it. Um, but we also have a 36 inch length, which is really nice if you've got a bunch of bulbs to plant or plugs or something like that, you can just stand and you know dig a bunch of holes all at the same time and then get down and do all your planting so you're not up and down, up and down. Uh, we also have a 40 inch length, 48 inch length, uh, two inch diameter auger here, which this one Aaron thought might be handy for him since he is taller than me to dig holes, but it did seem a little bit tall. I do think though, because the two inches are really good size to have to dig underneath sidewalks. Um, if you had a wider walkway, this would be a really nice length to have. We used this one, I think, which is the 36 inch length to get underneath the sidewalk at our friend's house last year. We were planting up their area and they only had water access on one side of a walkway. So we dug away from the sidewalk, drilled a hole and we were able to run drip underneath the sidewalk. It was awesome and fast. So again, the two inch diameter auger is really good for small bulbs, plugs, and going underneath sidewalks. And then we move up to our three inch diameter, which I've got a seven inch size or length um, attached to this drill already. We have a 12 inch length as well. We've also got, boy, we've got a couple of really long ones. This is closer to the 36 inch size or 30 inch, I can't remember. I need to I need to like have a printout. There are so many different lengths available, but um, this one Aaron uses quite a bit. This is good for larger bulbs, not huge bulbs, not like colossal size bulbs, but medium to bigger size bulbs, and then uh, bedding plants, things like that. And then there's this giant one. I think I already mentioned <laughs> we don't use this. Like we used it one time and figured out this is way too long. Um, but there may be, I mean, if you're seven feet tall, this is the auger for you. So if I was to recommend it, an auger that I use the most, this is actually the one that I gravitate towards, which is very similar to the 12 inch size, three inch diameter power planter auger. Uh, but these, this line right here, they're proprietary and they're made uh, to fit the size of containers that Proven Winners plants come in. Uh, so it's very nice. Like I plant a lot of Proven Winners plants so I can know that if I use this one, it's gonna fit the plants that I need to plant. Um, so anyway, this is called Twist and Plant right here, available in 12 inch length. And then also there's an extended version right here. Um, if you need to do something a little bit, I don't know, like, you do still have to bend over a little bit, but anyway, you can see we use this a lot. It's just caked with soil. We need to be better about cleaning our tools around here. Um, in terms of the drill you need to operate the two and three inch augers, on Power Planter's website, it says you need at least an 18 volt cordless drill. Anything that's lower than that, it's just, these are just too much for a smaller size drill. It'll just burn up the motor. So you'll need a little bit of a bigger drill. So 18 volts cordless at minimum. We use a 20 volt max DeWalt drill here. So that's the one I'm gonna recommend because 
we never have any problem. It never gets hot. It never <laughs> burns up the motor. They work really, really well. Um, and we go with all DeWalt drills because the batteries are interchangeable and batteries are expensive. So if you can start swapping batteries from one tool to another when one runs out, it's really handy that way. Like this isn't the battery that actually comes with the 20 volt drill. The battery that comes with it is a little bit smaller. This came um, with something different, but you can use it on this drill and it lasts longer, which is great. Um, so anyway, that is what we use for the two and three inch size augers. And then we start moving up into kind of the more commercial size of augers, which, which start at four inch. So in the commercial line, there's a size four, five, seven, eight, nine. Uh, they skip size six, probably because there's really no reason to have that one. And honestly, I don't have a four or an eight to show you today. I have a five right here. You know what, I'm gonna move to the other side. I can't reach. So this is the five inch size. This is the seven inch. This is the nine inch. They all come in a 28 inch length. However, they do have an extender that's 16 inches if you need them to be taller. Aaron and I both use the 28 inch length though, and he's over six feet and I'm five four and it works great for both of us. So we haven't had any instance where we've wished we've had the extender. Um, one optional thing you can get on the four inch through the eight inch size, not the nine inch, and I'm not sure why, but is this heavy duty tip right here. So this section is an optional tip that you can put a bolt and a little pin to hold it in. This helps get through if you've got really heavy soil, hard pan, rocks, debris, this helps work through it really smoothly. So we've got it on both of these. But of course, like I said, the nine inch one here doesn't have it. There it is. Uh, the other thing that you have to be mindful of is that all of the larger sizes don't have a hex built into the top like the little ones. So, you know, the hex right here is the part that goes into the drill um, that connects it to the drill. So you have to get this adapter right here and this just slides right down in like that. You line it up, you put your bolt through like that and then your pin. Now you should have two of these. We've misplaced one. I don't know what's happened to it. So anyway, we'll have to go locate that. But that's how that's done. That way this goes into the drill um, and works great that way. Um, now the only size that I feel like, like the eight inch, I've never really found that I have wanted an eight inch for anything, but I do think we're gonna order a four inch because some of my bulbs that I get from Color Blends are massive. Huge daffodil bulbs that usually come like two or three bulbs connected together. Uh, and the three inch just quite, it doesn't do it. So I think the four inch is the only size that we're gonna get that I don't have currently. So in terms of what each one of these sizes does for you, the five inch size will dig holes for quart size pots, seven inch handles, one gallon size pots, and like four by four fence posts. Eight inch size, which I don't have to show you, does two gallon size pots, and then your nine inch does three gallon size pots, and then larger posts um, that you may wanna like six by six size posts. I typically like, the reason why I don't feel like I need an eight inch is that usually I like to have a little bit bigger size hole anyway. Like sometimes if I'm in an area where I don't mind if the dirt kicks out, I'll use this even for one gallon size pots because I like to fill backfill around the root ball with a lot of fluff. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of my preference. When it comes to what type of drill you need for the larger augers, the smaller ones just won't work. You have to get something a little bigger. This is the first one that we were using. It's a stud and joist drill. I do not recommend this one. It's the most expensive one. Uh, it was the only one that was available though at the time. Uh, we have moved since to this a cement mixer, I think is what it's called. Model 130, I don't know. We'll link it down below um, or put the model number on the screen or something, but way lighter and much easier to manage. This one is like borderline, I can't use it because of the, how heavy this drill just by itself is. Then you add a big battery and you add the auger, which are kind of hefty too. It just was a beast for me to carry around. And I was kind of afraid of it because like, if you aren't careful, <laughs> you gotta like know how to stand and how to rest these things on your legs so that they don't smack you in the middle of working with them. So I wouldn't recommend this, but I wanted to talk about it because it's in a lot of our videos because it's all we had. Now this one is so much better. It just like, it's a bump up. Woo! Hold on, I gotta attach that first. That's kind of important too. Well, let me show you how it's done. So. You slide this on like that, and I'm just gonna hand tighten it as much as I can. And then attached to this drill is this little key right here that you pop in, and then you tighten it as much as you can. Which sometimes I can get it really tight, sometimes Aaron does it for me, but most of the time I can do it. 
So this one just makes a whole lot more sense to me because the drill is just a little bit bigger than the smaller drills. Um, I like how this connects. It just feels so much better and it's so much lighter. Um, so anyway, the cement mixer is cheaper than the stud and joist drill as well, which is great. A couple of things I did want to mention is footwear, proper footwear. I never wear proper footwear and I wanted to mention that. Like, don't be me, wear boots. Um, I actually was cruising out to uh, plant something the other day in a video project and I had sandals on and I would have done it, probably would do it that way off camera to be honest with you, but I thought, nope, this is me on camera, I gotta put some closed toed shoes on, but these shoes are not gonna protect me any more than a pair of sandals. So just know that, I know I'm not wearing the proper footwear, wear a pair of boots when you're using these. Also, if you have ever told anybody that you have weak arms or weak wrists, this is probably not a tool that I would recommend that you use because they are heavy. If they catch a rock in the ground and you're not like, you're not, you don't have your power stance going or you know you just don't have a good grip on it, they can twist around. I've heard of people breaking their hands and wrists with these. So nothing ever remotely close to that has ever happened to me or to probably most people, but it can happen. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. At this point, I think I'm gonna go grab some plants. We'll head out to the new property and drill some holes in the ground so you can see what these things can do. All right guys, so I dug four holes, one with the three inch auger. This is a five inch, seven inch, nine inch. If I was to recommend any one of the larger sizes for you guys to get, I would go with the seven inch just because this heavy duty tip on the end, the optional tip, makes it so much easier to dig a hole. I can't even tell you how much easier it is. Um, you know, it is nice to have the capability of digging a larger hole with the nine inch and I'm not sure why you can't get the tip. I might ask them why. So this is just a standard annual size for Proven Winners. Um, and then I did use their twist and plant for this hole. These just pop right down in, just like that, perfect. So when we plant all of our annuals, we can just go along and you know, zip, 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 a bunch of holes. And then I can just pop plants right down in the holes. It's so fast. This is a gallon size right here. So the five inch, I actually dug it a little bit too deep. Five inch right there. So it does kick soil out. So it appears, oh, go ahead. We have puncture vine really bad out here. Um, it appears like I'm not planting at soil level. I'm planting deeper a lot of the time. It's because I just haven't scooted the soil out of the way. But you can see right there, that's a five inch size. This is the seven inch size here and a two gallon size pot. Just pops right down in. This is a beautiful day lily, isn't it? Primal scream. And then the nine inch hole with the three gallon size pot right here. Voila, easy. So on all of these, I mean, you can rock the auger, which I would recommend you do. Rock the auger back and forth to make the hole a little bit bigger because it is recommended to dig the hole wider than the root ball is. And, and that's really easy to do. You just kind of, you know, rock it back and forth in the hole. Um, I just dug my holes just straight down so you could see the diameter and that it does fit these uh, pots, which are really similar to all the other. I mean, one gallon, two gallon, three gallon size pots are all really uh, standard. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you a rundown on all the augers that we've tried out, how they're working for us, what we find to be the most helpful in our space, and then a visual guide, I guess, to show you what each one of them can do and what they fit. That's how I learned the best. And I'm hoping that by seeing it, you're able to, if you're in the market for an auger, you're able to make a decision that hopefully saves you money. Um, Cause like I said, you know, before we've ordered some sizes that really haven't worked out for us. And I'm trying to uh, help you avoid doing that same thing. And you know, everybody's situation is different. You may just want to have one for bulbs and the three inch size is perfect for you. Maybe you don't want to worry about drilling holes for bigger plants, but maybe you do. You know, maybe you have a large space that you're having to, you're facing planting and that's a lot of holes to dig and it does make really quick work of it. Again, we are not working with Power Planter. 
for this video. Um, it's just something that we find super helpful. And to my knowledge, it's the best auger out there. I mean, I'm happy to try other ones. If you guys know of other really good augers out there, I haven't researched it or anything fully, um, but I've tried out a lot of them. And those little flimsy ones you find usually displayed next to bulbs in the fall. Oh, I've tried those before. You hit one rock, they bend, and then you're done. You know, your tool's no good anymore. And that gets frustrating, um, especially when you've got a lot of things to do. So anyway, hope this video was helpful um, and hope you're having a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.